asked about the Rainbow Club, which is the last bar, gay bar in Atlantic City. That um, and it closed probably somewhere between 2017 and 2019. You know, a bar is a business. Do you know? And I had a talk with uh, and and well, actually, they owned a lot of the bars that were on New York Avenue. But I'm bringing up this idea about um, public safety because that's always been um, a thing with the locations of many gay bars. Now, you got your megaplexes and, and you know, things like the Studio 54 kind of thing, but it's always surrounded by, I'm gonna just say like vice kinds of things. There are known places where um, traffickers hang out, trying to lure people and that kind of thing. There's trafficking that, that not necessarily in, but in and around these, these places, drugs, not to mention the violence that occurs to LGBT people who frequent or who are customers. And so the last place, I mean, we went all the way, I'm gonna say from New York Avenue in the 70s, in the 60s and 70s, where the LGBT people owned that community. They lived there, they worked there, they played there. They owned the businesses and establishments there. Then we had um, places like, and John and Gary can tell you more about this, uh, Studio 50. Studio Six, that was more like a, um, you know, a, a real cl a club. It wasn't a bar. It was a club. It had different levels, DJs, uh, dancing boys in the cages, <laughs> you know, that kind of lights and everything. To um, then there was the brass rail, and again, I'm not going to be, and that that was over on um, Mount Vernon Avenue. Okay, so as you can see, we've kind of gone down to, until it was that rainbow room, which is on what was that Belleville Avenue? Yeah, it's like that side street. There. It's Bell. It's the side street Belleville Avenue, which is in between Florida and Texas, I think. Mm -hmm. In between Florida and Texas, Atlantic and Pacific. You know. Um, Dangerous area, drug infested, crime infested, trafficking, known for a trafficking area. Um, and so, so I'm saying before, and a place where LGBT people were safe as long as you were on the property and in the building. But walking out or coming to, not so much. And so, as far as the gay bar stuff is concerned, I'm concerned that that we do these kinds of things with um, public safety, and the prosecutor's office office is behind this 100% uh, safer communities, 100% to be able to keep LGBT people safe, and especially in these times that we're dealing with now. We had a period where. You know, we felt felt a little. You know, I could walk around and nobody's going to say anything or do anything. But in the in the times that we live in now, with the "Don't Say Gay" uh, banning drag, and you know that things with with trans youth, we're more likely to be attacked, verbally abused, uh, uh, physically attacked. And, and the thing about it is, is that we're trying to create an environment that, um, that law enforcement and public safety is responsive to us and that we trust them. And we're trying to build this trust so that when things happen, there's somebody that's gonna be there for you. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So that's, that's where our focus is as far as public safety and um, if we, whenever we do have a bar or, or any other places that we have, that they're safe and they're protected. Uh, we have the Equality, the Equality Act, and we're about trying to operationalize this Equality Act in terms of things like public safety. 
and civil rights because this public safety is civil rights.